Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on English semantics. Now we will talk about uh, metaphor, it's a kind of figurative language. Um, before I begin, I would like to start with this uh, riddle, yeah, the story about uh, the King Oedipus and the Sphinx. Okay, um, so the story is that King Oedipus wanted to travel from his place in Thebes to Delphi and the, along the journey, uh, King Oedipus needs to pass this sphinx, yeah, it's like the guardian of the of the of the path for him to get to Delphi, and everyone that wants to get past this sphinx, they need to uh, answer and you know answer correctly the riddle that is given by the sphinx. Um, so the riddle reads like this. Uh, from the sphinx, okay. Um, which is the animal that has four feet in the morning, two feet at midday, and three in the evening? You may already know or have heard such kind of uh, riddle in Indonesian, and you may already know the answer. Um, if you do know the answer, that's good. Um, but I want you to also think about why you get the answer that you know at the moment okay think about what motivates uh, that kind of answer based on uh, the reader here okay uh, with that now I will start with uh, what metaphor is from the classical perspective of language um, so you may have been taught uh, that metaphor is a matter of just language okay just language is there is nothing to do it is nothing to do with uh, thought or your conceptual system and because it is made of language uh, you are also thought that this metaphor can be found mostly in poetic language okay in in poetry in other literary works and metaphor also involve a novel or innovative use and poetic use of language and because of that you cannot find metaphors in the language that you use every day because you can only found it you can only find metaphor in poetry okay in poetic language which is uh, not an everyday language here here are two examples of metaphors um, about about death okay so these are metaphors about death um, do not go gentle into that good night death is the mother of beauty um, okay, so these two sentences are metaphorical because of these words. Yeah. The use of go and night and mother in these two examples are not their everyday or their literal usage. Yeah. Go here is not referring to the physical movement of something from one location to another physical location. Okay, um, And night here... Or, uh, Literally, it means time of the day, okay? Time of the day where there is no sun, but the stars and the sky is dark. So that's the original meaning of night. But here, it is used in different meaning, okay? Go here is not referring to physical movement to a place, but it's a kind of process, yeah, abstract process, into a certain state, certain condition, which is metaphorically uh, expressed by good night okay good night is uh, referring to death okay uh, as night is used to refer to death um, second example mother we know who or what a mother is it is a human being um, and death is something abstract it is not human but how can hum uh, uh, death be human such as mother okay so this uh, use of mother is not it in its literal sense so in it is in the metaphorical sense of mother Okay, um, and That's the classical view where you can only find metaphor in poetic language Yeah, because these two are from poem. Okay, but um, the contemporary view of metaphor uh, nowadays is different um, so technically they view metaphor as 
kind of conceptual phenomena. Okay, so the the central idea, the essence of metaphor is you understand and experiencing one thing, one domain of experience, which is typically more abstract, in terms of another domain of experience, which is more physical, which is related directly to your bodily experience uh, in your daily life. If we see uh, the previous example, words such as go, night, and mother, they are all close to us, okay? We go everywhere uh, nearly every day, except these days, yeah, during COVID-19, and we experience night every day. Uh, we know what mother is, yeah, we can see, touch, feel, but we don't really know what death is. We cannot feel it, we cannot touch it, we cannot see it, okay? So that's kind of abstract concept. It's understood using concepts that are close to us, that are directly related to us in its physical uh, domain, such as movement, time of the day, and kinship uh, uh, concept, yeah, like mother. So that's the idea uh, of understanding and experiencing one kind of thing, the more abstract thing, in terms of another, or using another more physical concept. Um, let's see more examples, okay? Um, these are linguistic expressions that refer to anger, that are used to talk about anger. And we will talk about conceptual and linguistic metaphors later on. So these are words, okay, the one that are the ones that are in blue, they are all words or vocabularies that refer to the concept of fire, but then they are used in the context of talking about anger. Okay, so we try to understand anger in terms of fire okay um and yeah so we 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 use the concept from anger i mean from fire yeah aspect of fire the behavior of fire to talk about the behavior of something abstract such as emotion especially anger and these words that uh, are used metaphorically in language they are called the linguistic metaphors and the concept that emerges from uh, looking at this set of examples, the concept that we talk about and understand uh, anger in terms of fire, this concept is called as conceptual metaphor. So we have conceptual metaphor, anger is fire that can be realized or manifested in language, okay, such as this one, metaphorical language about anger. And anger is fire conceptual metaphor can also be manifested in picture, such as this one. So this, well, this is not only picture, but this is a character from a movie, uh, which is titled uh, Inside Out. Okay, this movie uh, has characters. The main characters are emotion. Okay, they are, they are emotions. And one of the characters is this, anger. And they are, and he is depicted as if he's uh, in red color, okay, and when he's angry, he his head blazes with fire, okay. Um, so this is example that we have this concept or metaphor in our mind that can be actualized, can be manifested in different form, language, and uh, comic or character such as this one. Um, to get more examples, I provide. Uh, examples from Indonesian so that you can relate. Um, these are expressions also about anger in Indonesian, okay, and using words from the domain of fire to talk about these anger synonyms, okay. Um, igniting annoyance, igniting fury. Um, the fire of anger blazes, burning the blood in the liver. Uh, arms can extinguish Allah's wrath. Okay, so these are all examples of anger is fire in Indonesian language. And the idea that we, you know, the idea that we try to understand one thing in terms of another is captured, is represented as mappings. Okay, this is what cognitive linguists call as cross domain mappings, the idea of conceptual metaphor. So we try to map elements, okay, 
elements in the domain of fire, which is called the source domain. We map these elements uh, onto the aspects of um, aspect of the anger domain, yeah, the target domain, um, such that uh, the fire is understood as the anger, igniting fire is understood as causing the anger, the heat of the fire is understood as the intensity of the anger, okay, and when you try to put out the fire, you try to uh, reduce uh, the intensity of your anger, okay, so the concrete domain that you use to understand the abstract domain is called the source domain because this is the source from which you get the concept to understand other con domain and this domain that you try to understand is called the target domain um, here are other examples of um, metaphors for anger in english uh, you can have expressions that illustrate anger as hot liquid in uh, body container so our body is conceptualized as a container of anger okay that's metaphorical concept and um, anger can also be understood as an opponent that you fight that you battle okay that you try to uh, win over and um, anger can also be understood as dangerous animal such as this character of angry bird okay yeah and this is uh, illustration of uh, anger as hot liquid in the body container yeah as if you are uh, blowing off your steam okay he's angry here all right so with this uh, view examples from just one domain of anger we now come to this uh, riddle again uh, which is actually based on metaphor yeah, the answer of this is based on metaphor um, this riddle appears in this book by Zoltan Kovac says. So the answer for this riddle is man, yeah, human being, um, because in during the um, during the morning is it is understood as if we are still in our childhood in um, maybe not really childhood when we still crawl, okay, in, in baby baby uh, phase, and then in the midday uh, we stand up with our two feet feet okay and then in the evening uh, we use stick uh, so you have uh, two feet and one stick that help you to walk okay so we we understand lifetime yeah humans life as if it is time of the day okay so that's the metaphor that Oedipus used uh, to answer the riddle of uh, the spring here so that he can pass and get into his destination Okay, so that's one of the relevance of metaphor. Okay, the, the, the relevance of uh, understanding one kind of thing, in this case, uh, human's life, in terms of another thing, uh, which is life, uh, I mean, times of the day. Okay, um, okay, well, conceptual metaphor has different implications, yeah? uh, important implications, not only in language, but also in social life, uh, that I will not talk about in this video so um, if you want to learn more about conceptual metaphors i suggest you read this um, books okay um, and with that i will close this session and thank you i hope to see you soon